Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for our introduction to Rexnord's website coupling selector. This selector greatly simplifies the coupling selection process by giving you multiple coupling selection options for a given application. With this, the selector allows you to compare, receive a quote or drawing of your final coupling selection. As we look at page one here, you'll notice on the right side there is an equipment graphic with some numbered elements. And on the left side, the corresponding numbered selection blocks. The numbered fields and the service factor block needs to be completed to make the coupling selection. So let's take a look at some of the elements that are on this page. You'll notice there are five numbered fields. Power, speed, driver shaft diameter, driven shaft diameter, shaft gap, and then coupling service factor. So let's start with the first one, power. So you'll notice there is a drop down in this field. And if you click on the drop down, you'll see a number of common horsepowers listed. If you don't see the horsepower that you're looking for, you can go to the custom block and then click that and then just input your horsepower. So for this example here, I am going to select 20 horsepower. The next field is speed. And here again, we have a drop down with some of the common motor speeds and also a custom drop down. So if you do not see the speed that you need, you can click on the custom block and just type in the speed of your application. For our selection here, we're going to choose 1800 RPMs. The next three fields, fields three, four, and five, are dimensional information. And if you look at the graphic on the right, you'll see those numbers where we are talking about the driver shaft diameter or the motor or primary driver. The driven shaft diameter is number four. And then the distance between the ends of those two shafts is indicated by the number five, shaft gap or sometimes called DBSE. Now, you'll notice that in my selection example here, I inputted 20 horsepower and 1800 RPM. And field number three auto populated with a dimension of 1.625. Now, what's happening here is, is that the combination of 20 horsepower and 1800 RPM comes out to be a very common NEMA frame size. And that shaft specification is 1.625 inches. So that is most likely the shaft size of the motor in this example. If your shaft size is other than that, you can just simply type over uh, the 1.625 with whatever shaft diameter you have. Now, you'll also notice on these three uh, items, three, four, and five, there is a drop down on the right, which is inch or millimeters. So these just determine what the units are uh, for our shaft diameter and our shaft gap. So in our example, our shaft diameter of the driver is in fact inch and five eighths. Now my driven shaft diameter is metric. So I am going to click and change the units to millimeter and I'm going to input my driven shaft diameter, which is 60 millimeters. The next item that we have to fill in is shaft gap. And here my units are inch and it is 0.125 inches. All right, so that's the first five items on our list. And then the last item is coupling service factor. And here we simply have a drop down and you can select uh, the more, more common service factors 1.0 through 3.0. For our example today, we're going to select a 1.0 service factor. Now you notice after I inputted the service factor, the last field, uh, the design torque, popped in a number of 701 inch pounds. And as I mouse over the uh, hint, you'll notice it says calculated including service factor. So in other words, if I change this from let's say 1.0 to 2.0, you'll notice that design torque changes. Okay, so that is accounting for the service factor of your application. All right, so now we have all the inputs 
uh, for our coupling, coupling selection. So let's hit search. Okay, so now we have a couple of things that are showing up on our screen on this page. You'll notice on the top up in this area, all of the inputs that we put on page one are all carried through. Now this is meant to be a quick reference uh, so that uh, either you can refresh what your inputs are, but you can also change the inputs and it will change your selections. So for instance, I'm gonna change our service factor back to 1.0 and hit search. And now it will again refresh my screen for a 1.0 service factor. The handy thing about that upper block is that if you're making a number of selections, it's a lot faster than having to go back to the first page. Okay, so now let's focus in on this, this lower section here. What we have are several elements. One, uh, the selector has taken our inputs and it has made four potential coupling selections. It's made a grid, an Omega elastomer, a lifeline gear, and a Thomas disc coupling selection. Now there's a number of things that you can do at this point. If you know, for example, that you definitely are gonna want a disc coupling or any of these couplings, you can just go down and hit the select button and it will carry you through with more questions about that specific selection. You can also, on the left side, you'll notice there is a number of filters. So I can also filter. Let's just say I want elastomeric or elastomeric and disc, so on and so forth. So for my example here, what we're going to do is, is we're gonna compare an elastomeric and a disc coupling. Okay, so you see both of those selections there. But I wanna use the coupling that has the smallest diameter. And so what you can do is, is if you want to compare the couplings, um, you can select any or all of the couplings that are given, hit the compare, click on the compare blocks, and then click on compare selected results. So now what the program has done is, is it's given us only the elastomeric omega and the Thomas Dick disc coupling, and it's providing with us all sorts of rating information. Uh, whether it be torque rating or temperature or diameter or weight. And again, what I was trying to find was the smallest diameter coupling between those two. So if I look down here in the dimensional block, I see the elastomeric omega is seven and a quarter inches and the disc option is 5.69 inches. So I wanna use the smallest coupling. So I am now going to select uh, the disc coupling option, the Thomas Series 54RD. So I click Select, and now this carries me on to another screen that gives me a little bit more detail on our Series 54RD selection. So as you look at these drop downs, we have the general items, and in this category, we have the product, the product size, um, and we talk about some of the hub orientations, okay? The important stuff is really down here when we start looking at the driver and the driven hub information. So if we look at the driver hub first, uh, it has selected a straight board finish. Um, per the input that we gave it, it is looking at an inch shaft. And it has chosen by default, um, all of these couplings have a default bore fit. It has chosen an interference fit. And so you'll see below that our 1.625 inch diameter, and then also the resulting bore tolerance. Now notice I can change any of these fields and I may say that, for example, I wanna have a clearance fit. And now when I change the clearance fit, you'll notice the bore tolerances um, do change to that of a clearance fit. I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna leave this as an interference fit um, and we'll just keep scrolling down. So the next area will give us what the key fit is, uh, what the key type, the key size. Um, because this is an interference fit, it typically does not have a set screw. But if you chose to have a set screw, you could make that change here. I'm gonna keep it with no set screws. Um, there's also options for polar holes. So that's the driver hub. 
We then scroll down and we can see similar information for the Driven Hub. So once again, uh, it is a straight board hub. This hub, as you might recall, is a, is a metric, a 60 millimeter metric. So it's looking at bore units in the metric AGMA standard. It is putting it as an interference fit and it does give us those bore tolerances, the key fit, key type, and key size. Okay, so now we're kind of towards the bottom of um, defining this coupling, and we can just go to the very bottom and click Next. Now the coupling selector is building our results, and there you have it. So we have our coupling results, it gives us the description, a Series 54RD, size 125. Uh, it talks about all the bores, all the fits, and everything else. So now at this point, you can decide if you want to. You can request a quote. And if you click on Request Quote, it will simply ask you for your email, and it will send you a quote. Uh, you can also get a drawing of the coupling we've just uh, created. Uh, by just saying request a CAD drawing and providing your email. So that's really what the whole selection uh, process looks like in this new coupling selector. Um, it's a very versatile tool. It allows you to look at all sorts of different options uh, for the same horsepower, speed, and application. Rexnord has the broadest portfolio of, of couplings to offer here, and this selection allows you to look at all those options. If you have any questions, just visit our website at www.rexnord.com or give us a call at our factory. Thanks.